Make a little commercial for yourself or a little statement about what you want your life to be like. And in that statement, I said bold things like, I am Mindy Evil, a sharp, successful business person. I get what I want. I talk to people everywhere I go. Back then, I was super shy. I wasn't bold and confident, but I knew that this is who I wanted to become to create the life that I wanted. Has your life, your dreams been interrupted? Good news. It is possible to reinvent our lives. People are doing it every day, and some are brave enough to share the struggles, disappointments, and challenges. If you are looking for a new beginning, a do-over, or to rediscover your passion, maybe even find a new one, then grab a cup of coffee and let's talk. Interrupted, Act 2, Reinventing Your Legacy, with your host, Coach Lori. You are hearing stories from people whose lives have been interrupted, and yet, They're using their stories to help others. Have you ever thought of using your story to help others by writing a book or creating a podcast? Well, then you're in the right place. Go to www.coachlaurie.com for all the details. Mindy Diebel is a blue diamond in the same company I'm in, Trinant, but she's also a top leader in the network marketing industry. And what I love about Mindy is I've heard her speak so many times. It isn't often you hear someone speak and you actually a year later remember what they said. You always have powerful speeches with such impact of things we can use every day. And I'm so grateful for you. Welcome, Mindy. Thank you so much for having me, Lori. I'm so excited to be on. Tell us about your life and what you love about it. I am a mom of four kids. I'm a a young grandma too. I have nine grandbabies. So I absolutely love it. And I have one on the way. My kids, they all got married young and they started having kids young, which it kind of makes sense because I was a young mom. I first had my babies. I feel blessed to just have these amazing babies in my life. 20 years ago, I made a decision that I was going to create my life. You know, I was going to decide how my life would turn out. It truly has been a blessing. And I, I truly believe we all have the power to design our own life to decide what we want our life to look like. And I just did that 20 years ago. And and that really has made a huge difference in my life. I think it's so important for people to realize that we can make that decision. Mm -hmm. For me, I was a single mom and I struggled. And I look at the life you've created. And now you have all these kids, but you have grandkids and you actually have time for them. So take us back to before you created this life, what was it like? And what spurred you to go ahead and make this decision? 20 years ago, I was a preschool teacher. My background is early education. My husband, he's always been a business owner. and, And the main reason why is because we had huge dreams. I grew up in a family of seven kids. I saw my parents really struggle. Struggle. I have the most amazing parents in the world, but life was hard and, and money doesn't buy you happiness, but being broke doesn't either. Money is about options. It determines the house you live in, the car you drive, even the quality of food that you provide for your family, the vacations you go on or you don't go on. And my parents just were always trying in every way they possibly could to provide this amazing life. Well, really just to feed us, you know, <laughs> those kinds of things. We didn't really go on vacation or anything, but they did provide an amazing life because they taught me work ethic and they taught me awesome things, but they gave me a burn that we could have more options in our life. When I was super young, I had these huge dreams. And then my husband and I got married at a really young age with four kids under the age of six years old. Cause I was 26 years old when I had four kids under the age of six. And I realized, okay, we've got to figure this out. He got into owning businesses. We owned a company that did maintenance for grocery stores. So he would travel all over the place. We called him the shopping cart repair man. Cause he really, he went to grocery stores stores and he fixed shopping carts. And then we also got into the franchise space thinking franchises will be great because our whole goal was time with our family. We can have managers run these franchises and then eventually leverage ourselves. But what we found is every business owned us rather than us owning them. 
And there was a lot of overhead and a lot of headache with it. But 20 years ago, before I got in the industry I'm in today, I decided, you know what? My life can look different. I'm the script writer. I'm the director. I'm the producer of my life. I am going to design the life that I truly want. Because before you ever are a millionaire or before you ever have the things that you really want, you first have to be that person every day. You have to walk like a millionaire. You have to talk like a millionaire. You have to do the things that top producers do before you're ever going to have those results. I got the book, The Magic of Thinking Big Out. Again, I had read it when I was 19 years old and got that book out. And, and in that book, it says, make a little commercial for yourself or a little statement about what you want your life to be like. I wrote out exactly who I wanted to be what I wanted to create. And in that statement, I said bold things like I am Mindy Debel, a sharp, successful business person. I get what I want. I talk to people everywhere I go. Back then, I wasn't. I was super shy. I wasn't bold and confident, but I knew that this is who I wanted to become to create the life that I wanted. And then I also had all my financial goals. That time I was driving a 1988 Chevy Corsica with a million miles on it, no air conditioning. But in my statement, I said, you know, I drive a black shiny Porsche. I couldn't even imagine that, but that's what I put. That's what I wanted in my life. I always thought if somebody else could make a million dollars, why not me? In my statement, I said, I make a hundred thousand dollars a month. I own a cabin on the lake with wave runners, snowmobiles, boats, the things that I really wanted and the time I wanted to spend with my family. And then I had a little mantra, Mindy Debel, nothing can stop you, nothing. You look good, you feel good, you're enthusiastic, you are persistent. Failure can't cope with persistence. You have what it takes. Go forward, just do it. I would slam my Chevy Corsica door. I'd walk into these dealerships because I, at that time in my franchise world, I was I was selling truck bed liners and I'd walk in and I would close everybody in the room because I became what I put in that statement. I became a force to be reckoned with. Within five years of designing that, I created what was in that statement, everything that was in that statement. It didn't happen where I was in the industry that I was in. I always thought it would, but see, here's what happens, Lori. Once you make a definite decision to do something, the universe responds. The people come to you, the resources come to you, the ideas come to you, the vehicle comes to you, but you have to be definite and committed about what you're creating. And that's what happened for me. Because of that, I was led to the industry I'm in today, which is network marketing. Within my first six months, of it, I was able to quit my job, be home with my babies, live a life on my terms. And what I mean by that is I get to decide when I work, where I work, what I do. I get to decide my paycheck. It took a lot of work and effort, but because of me deciding this is who I am, this is what I'm creating. That's how I was able to do what I've done. This industry has, has done so much for us. I mean, we've traveled all over the world. I sent my kids to private school. These are things I didn't even think were possible. When I made that statement 20 years ago, I couldn't even pay for gymnastics for my kids. But I'm grateful for the abundance and, and the things that it has provided for me and for my family. It's really just one decision. It doesn't matter what your circumstances are today. They don't define what you can go create. You have the power. You have the ability. It's not about your ability. It's about your commitment. Are you committed to the cause and the things that you really want in your life? And if you are, then focus on that because focus is the key to success. I love that you made those strong statements because I really believe in self-talk and how important that is. I remember one of the times you were speaking, you talked about when you first got into the network marketing industry and you had to make some phone calls and you were pretending. And what I loved about that story is sometimes I feel shy about reaching out. If you have a system to follow and you follow it, for instance, every day I get this email, well, this shout out, it's from Mindy Diebel. It says, hey, Lori. And it just gives me what I need to get through the day for what to post. And following a system is so important. And that's why I really believe in network marketing. And I think it it's so good for so many people, but single moms who maybe have to work two or three jobs, if one of them can be at home, with network marketing, with a system that works, they can make inroads for their family. They can change the trajectory 
of Mm -hmm. where they're going. Uh, What I love about network marketing, okay, so I did come from the traditional business space. I believe that no matter who you are, no matter what, like I said, your circumstances are, you can go create whatever you want. There's so much abundance around you and there's so many opportunities in so many different areas. But what I love most about network marketing because of coming from traditional business is it's low overhead. A single mom who doesn't have a lot of money can get started for a very minimal amount with no overhead and be plugged into a system that's unbelievable. There are top leaders there that have already gone through the headache and the hassle of that. And they want you to win because when you win, they win. That's the power of network marketing. In my franchise space, I got in the franchise space because they have a system that's duplicatable and it works. McDonald's, for example, it's a franchise and many millionaires have been created from McDonald's, not because they have the best hamburgers. I don't think that they do, but they have an incredible system that is proven and it works and you can go anywhere and you know that you're going to get the same exact hamburger, the same exact fries, whatever it is, people can rely on that and they count on that. That is the same with plugging into a system that's already created and, and you can just go through those steps. Anything worthwhile takes work. It doesn't matter what it is. It can be traditional business. It can be anything. It's going to take work. You look at any industry, There's the three percenters, and then there's 97% of the people. The three percenters are top producers. They're making money. They're doing big things. Then 97% of the people are living paycheck to paycheck. So what's the difference between the three percenters and 97% of the people in network marketing, in real estate, in traditional business? Three percenters are willing to do what 97% of the people are not willing to do. So if you have that heart and you're willing to do what 97% of the people are not willing to do, you want to get started. Don't let money be an issue. Don't let time be an issue because network marketing is an incredible way to leverage yourself. When you want something bad enough, we figure it out. Busy people get the most things done, actually. I love network marketing because an average person like myself can get started, get plugged into a system that is already there for you. And as long as you have a work ethic, as long as you have a desire, then you take those steps necessary. You really can create a life that you truly want. I found network marketing when my kids were little, sort of by accident. I was trying to lose some weight and I found this product and started taking it. And it was before internet and people kept saying, Hey, how are you losing weight? I'm like, Oh, the, and we'd have to fill out this form and mail it in with a check. (laughs) And I remember I loved it because three reasons. One is I was building a community. Uh Number two, I had something great and my product was getting paid for. And the thing about network marketing is many companies don't give much of a compensation. When I started with this company, it was so amazing because I loved the product. I'll never forget the day my upline Tom called and he said, well, when are you going to go pick up your Jeep? And I said, (laughs) what? He goes, yeah, you've been telling so many people you've qualified for a Jeep. I'm like, wait a minute. So I called the next person to me and she had just got a Jeep. And I said, can you promise me this will be paid for? Like, I'm not going to get in trouble. Like, isn't it funny? There could be so much skepticism. Two and a half years ago now, I got my Jeep and every month it's paid for. And I'm not going to say I don't work for it. I work for it. I share. I love the product. I love the people. When I got into Trinant, that's when COVID hit and we Uh stopped meeting in public and we started Zoom. Every week I was meeting with all these people and I'm a single woman. I was all by myself. And so I felt like I had this amazing community. And it has been such a blessing to me. And then to watch you and to watch the people ahead of me has inspired me. And I really wish single moms could catch on to the vision because if they could only have their car paid for, if that's all the effort they put in, isn't that worth it? Yes, yes. I've helped a lot of single moms do some amazing things with this. And it's really been a huge blessing. There's other benefits to it, not just the money, but I love the personal growth and the community too. But when I was 19 years old, I was introduced to the power of 
personal growth. In fact, a mentor told me many years ago, listen, you can overcome any problem, any problem that you have, you can overcome it. You just have to outgrow that problem. You yourself have to grow personally and outgrow that problem. And I really took that to heart. And in fact, that statement, that one statement is what made me get the magic of thinking big book out again, 20 years ago and reread it start implementing some of the things that it said, because I realized, okay, I have a problem. We just started this franchise. I don't know what to do with this. I am going to outgrow this problem. And I did through personal growth and through implementing what I was reading. Network marketing, the other power of that is that it's an opportunity for you to grow and to become better in every aspect of your life. The third thing is, is the community. Community is great. We are who we hang out with. I always say, if you hang out with five idiots, you'll be the sixth. If you hang out with five champions, you'll be the sixth. It's just how it works. And so I love that there's a community of people that are working on something bigger than where they are. And they're personally growing and committed to change. That's powerful to be around people like that all the time. I see this not only in network marketing, but in other masterminds. They say about making quick decisions, when you see an opportunity to take it, to try it. So many times I hear people say, I've been praying for an answer. And then maybe their answer comes along, but they don't grab it. If it feels scary, run to the danger. A mentor has told me that many times, and it's true, because anytime you're going to take your life to another level, it is going to feel scary. It's going to feel uncomfortable. No change equals no change, right? But but change is uncomfortable. Change, if you think about it, if you decide I'm going to get a gym membership, I'm going to go to the gym every single day. The first day at the gym is awful. It's, it's hard, right? The second day is hard. It gets easier and easier the more that you do it, but you're trying to make change happen in your body. Change is going to take work. It's going to be hard. And that is the same with anything. But many mentors have said, anytime it feels scary, you've got to chase after that because that means growth for you. Kevin Hart, the famous comedian, I took it to heart. He said, listen, that discomfort or that uncomfortable feeling that you feel right now, that is the dragon that's guarding the gold for you. Every day, go slay that dragon. Slay that dragon because he's guarding that gold. And there is so much there for you when we push past those fears, when we push past. There's five things that separate the people that are average from the, the top, top producers. Five things that separate the 3% from the 97%. One is focus. Being intentional about your life. Be focused. Don't let the distractions stop you from that big picture. How many people set New Year's resolutions in January? And then after the first week, they gave up on that. Most of the time, it's because we get distracted. We go back to old habits Maybe they're not even bad habits, but they're old habits, distractions that can stop us from that big picture of what we really want to go create. Number one is focus. Number two is not believing that we can do it. Lack of self-esteem that can stop people. You got to know it's not about your ability. It's about your commitment. Once you make a definite decision, all the resources, the people, the vehicle, they will come to you. The skills will come to you too. You don't have to be good at everything. And you're going to learn those skills by just taking action. But then the third thing that stops people is fear. The fear of the unknown. Fear of, man, I don't know. I've, I've done this before and it didn't work out for me. Hey, any time that you're going to go do something big, you have to persist until the miracle. You're going to fall down, but there's only three types of people. There's winners, there's quitters, and there's winners who haven't won yet. I didn't say failure there. If you feel like you've failed before, that's okay. All you have to do is pick yourself back up and just don't quit on your dreams. Don't quit on your dreams. Winners, quitters, winners who haven't won yet. I was a winner who just hadn't won yet. I was looking for that win and I just didn't quit. Number four is other people's opinions. Other people's opinions can stop us dead in our tracks. You have to know my whole family thought it was crazy to be in this industry. When I got back in this industry 18 years ago, they said, Mindy, first of all, you already did this and you didn't make any money, right? How many people have done something before and, and it didn't work out and they just give up. I almost did. I would have missed out on millions of dollars had I just 
listen to them. My dad said, nobody makes money, only the people at the top. My sister said, I know people who did that. They didn't make any money. It was my brother who laughed at me. My mom wouldn't be my customer. All of these things. They all love this industry today. Do you know why? Because I realized I still have to go do it anyway. If I buy into their opinion, I'm buying into their lifestyle and they were all broke. I was broke as well. I wanted a different lifestyle. So when it comes to your finances, who are you listening to? Make sure they have the lifestyle that you want. I followed my mentor at 23 years old. He was making $100,000 a month. And I thought, dang, I need to follow this guy. And I'm grateful that I did because... Now today, my whole family loves this industry. They respect me for it. It's blessed many of them because I went and pushed past my fears. And then last but not least is work ethic. Stephen Hogan says this very best. He says, you can't have a million dollar dream with a minimum wage work ethic. This is going to take work. Anything is going to take work. Anything that you want to go pursue, whether it be in network marketing, whether it be with your business, it doesn't matter. It's going to take work. But if you have a work ethic, if you have a desire and a no quit attitude, write this down, persist until the miracle. If you do that, big things will happen for you. That would be my advice for anybody that wants to take their life to another level. And yes, I had a ton of fears, Lori. When I first got started, like I was so scared. I pretended to make phone calls for two hours, like with my mentor pretended. Do you know how hard it is to pretend to make a phone call? But I didn't get any customers either when I was trying to do that. Nothing worked. I cried. I fretted about it. And then once I just realized, you know what? I just got to push past this fear. Action conquers fear. Within two hours, I got all of my customers, but I just had to take action. It's all about taking action. I'm so glad you didn't give up and that you didn't listen to others because you have been such a great mentor to all of us, giving us the courage and even the mantra that you said early on from, from the book that you got at one of the conventions, I recorded that. And even though it was you and you said your name, Mindy Beebel, I just played it every day because self-talk is so important. And even when we hear it from outside, like hearing you say what your mantra was, I'm like, yeah, that's me. I can do that. And that's where the self-esteem and the belief comes in. And what is so powerful about this industry is what you said. It's it, There's so much about self-growth. I don't even like to say self-help, but like, so for some of our teams, we're on kind of that 75 hard, only we're doing our own version of it. And we're getting yeah. calls every day. And I've been an entrepreneur. I mean, I work in radio, but that's part-time. So I've been an entrepreneur and it can be so lonely. And this industry, we're not lonely. We're all building each other up. I've made some of the best friends being in this. So I am so grateful that you said yes, and that you've been such a model for all of us and for the work that you do and that you could just kind of sit back now, but yet you keep pouring into us. And I love that so much. Well, we appreciate you and your leadership too. Seriously, this industry and really anything, your income is a direct reflection of the value that you give to the marketplace. And you add so much value, Lori, to so many people. And I bet the people that are following you and listening, they agree with that. But that's powerful to think about. If you want to have a bigger income, think about how you can serve more. Who can you serve? What can you do? I promise you that you have talents and gifts that the world needs to hear and you need to share and we're waiting for you. Think about those gifts that you have and go and reach out to as many people as you can. And I promise you, as you serve, then you'll be blessed in lots of different ways, not just financially, but many different ways. What ultimately do you want people to know? My biggest, I guess, thing that I would want anybody to know is it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what has happened in your past or decisions that you made, because we've all done dumb things. I mean, that's just life. No matter who you are, no matter what circumstances you have put yourself in or you are in financially or whatever, you have that power to change all of that. You truly do. And it's and you're just one decision away from changing your life. Just one decision. Realize that what comes into your mind 
comes into your life? What are you focused on every single day? Be intentional. Don't just let life give you whatever they give you because they'll just give you scraps. Go out and get the abundance that's there for you. Just go out and chase that. And I promise you, as you go and you hit your head against the wall, because it will happen, right? It's not going to be perfect every single day. But as you go and you chase that and you do your very best, my mantra is every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And if you have that attitude, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. I'm, I'm going to do more. I'm going to do my very best. And you just become the very best version of yourself. Don't compare yourself to anybody else, but become the very best version of yourself. Look at what you did yesterday and how can you do 1% more today? When you do that, I promise you, you can create whatever life that you want. I know that because I know where I've come from. And I know if I can do it, each and every one of you can as well. That's so beautiful. Thank you. It's so encouraging and hopeful. So one last question. We know you read the book, The Magic of Thinking Big. What are you reading now? You know what? I am reading The Power of One More by Ed Millett. I love that book. But I like to read books over and over and implement. I learn things differently. And you have a different perspective in every time of your life. Like I read The Magic of Thinking Big when I was 19 years old. And it, and it taught me to think bigger. But then when I read it again when I was 30, I was like, oh, I need to actually get focused and make a statement for myself and do that. So I encourage you, some of the books that really resonated with you in the past, go back to them reread them. There's so many books that have changed my life in, in different ways. But whatever you are really struggling with, like maybe you know, like communications, How to Win Friends and Influence People was one of the best books I read when I was 19 years old. But then rereading that later on in life is powerful. Again, to just like, oh yeah, now I, I get some things I can do different. Or if you're working on closing, I love Grant Cardone's books. The 10X Rule, Be Obsessed or Be Average, powerful books for me, but find books that resonate with you. And then don't just read them once. It's not about how many books you read. It's about what you're implementing in those books. So John Maxwell said it very best. He said, read it, implement it, and then teach it, read it, implement, teach it. Because when you teach it, you learn more too, but nothing's going to happen just from reading a book, right? You have to implement what you learn. And so make sure you're doing that. I love that. Well, thank you so much. I'm so grateful for your time and all your brilliant wisdom. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. You're the best. I appreciate you. Do you have brain fog? Are you exhausted all the time? Do you struggle with depression? How about cravings? Imagine an enzyme that turns sugar into fiber. For a link to order your bottle, email me at lacoach at comcast.net. That's L-A-C-O-A-C-H at comcast.net. Three things we learned from Mindy. Read it, implement it, and teach it. To make a statement about who you are, and what you want to be, even if it's not true for now. Write yourself a little commercial and say it every day. And you have the power to make a different life for yourself. There's mentors, there's books, there's help and support. You can have a life that you design and you love. If you love this podcast, here's a big ask. Will you share with your friends and family? Subscribe, give us a review, and a five-star rating so that others looking to reinvent their lives will be able to get the help they're looking for. Thank you in advance.